What's up guys, it's Brent with Sonic Electronics. And I'm Alan. And today we got a Q&A for you about fuses. That sounds great. All right, so our question today is actually off of YouTube from Mr. Giggity 100. Is it really Giggity 100? <laughs> yeah, Mr. That, Mr. Friggin', Giggity. That's freaking awesome. All right, so the question all is. All right. All right. <laughs> I have two 12 inch MA audio subs and I'm running a 1600 watt Hyphonics Brutus to them. What size fuse should I be running from the battery to the amp? I have a 60 amp fuse and it blew after 30 seconds of a song. Well, uh, is it a, he said 1600 watt? 1600 watt, he's running a 60 amp fuse. I mean, I'm not sure if that's a 1600 watt RMS or split that in half and it's 800 watts RMS, but either way, your fuse is still too small. More than likely. So guys, it's really important to know if your amp truly puts out the right power when choosing the fuse. Um, obviously, the, hopefully the manufacturer did recommend what size fuse and power wire that they recommend to their amplifier. But if they didn't, you can do some simple calculations assuming that your amplifier puts out 1600 watts. So right there we have some Ohm's law and some Watt's law, so we're gonna do some Watt's law right now. So if you take a look at the P right there and the I and the E, <laughs> that's pi, that's Watt's law. And uh, so we know how much power your amplifier is. Well, we kind of know. So assuming it's 1600 watts, we also need to know one more thing. We need to know what your voltage is. So for this particular equation, we're just gonna go with 13.8 volts because a lot of people wind up having about 13.8 volts. Uh, and of course, I don't know what your charging system and all that good shenanigans looks like. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna basically want to find out what I is. That is the current, which is also amperage. So we're gonna take 1600 watts and we're gonna divide that by 13.8 volts. Which is your energy. And boom, 115.9. Well, you're not gonna find 115.9 fuse, are you? <laughs> right, Brendan? No. But what is he gonna find? A 120. <laughs> exactly, 120. So yeah, 120 amp fuse would probably be your best bet, because Alan here did his math, and you had one, what was it, 115.4? 115.9. Boom, 115.9. Boom. Boom. So yeah, 120 would be safe. And uh, obviously, I mean, it, the general rule of thumb is if you have 1600 watts RMS, you probably want to run a 180 amp to 200 amp fuse, right? What'd you say? I, they don't make a 180, but I'm just saying in general, like, maybe you know, know, let's say you have a 1500 watt RMS amplifier, you want to run a 150 amp fuse. You can just do it that cheater way. You really yeah, wanted to. Yeah, but I mean, but you, it's probably gonna be a little on the larger side. Yeah. If you go, if you kinda do you don't Brennan's too big. math, but you know. He's like, take the wattage and add a zero. No, subtract a zero, fool. Oh yeah, take a zero. <laughs> add a zero, they don't make fuses that big. They might. 16,000 amp fuse. No, but, but that's a pretty easy way to kind of roughly figure it out. So, I mean, assuming that the amplifier is really 1600 watts uh, RMS, uh, you'd be looking at about a 120 amp fuse. Um, I, I would say anywhere between a, a 100 and a 120 would be fine. Yeah. Uh, but it, obviously at 60, uh, if your amplifier is indeed 1600 watts RMS, you're pretty much uh, at, at half yeah, of, uh, you, the, of the rating of what you need the fuse to be. So you're just drawing too much current and you're popping that fuse. Don't buy any more 60 amp fuses. Uh, actually, regarding that, I just saw a question right above it that might as well knock it out at the same time. It's actually from uh, C and get, Capital 9. Not, not to take away from Brendan's me. thing that he's reading right now, but if you have a glass AGU fuse holder, Trash take it out and throw it away because those type of fuses are no good. They'll look like they're okay and you're like, oh, my amp's not working, the fuse is fine, I looked at it. But what will happen is the solder will actually get hot and it will actually come unsoldered. The trace will come unsoldered, so it'll visually look like it is. And since most of you guys don't have a multimeter in your toolbox, you just looked at the fuse and said it was good. Yeah. And so get a better fuse that's rated better, and any shop would probably tell you not to use that. Yeah, because most of the time your fuse holder is underneath your hood where there's a lot of heat. So it's definitely not uh, something I would advise going it's with. Like, it's like old school. Yeah. You know? Like. You know. Like if I wanted to go back to the 1980s and I would see glass fuse holders as like the best fuse you could buy. Make sure they have the gold tips on each end. Totally. Okay, like anyways, 
This guy's going on a rant. Uh, we have a second question that's actually related to that. I just saw it's uh, what is better to use a fuse or a fuse, a fuse and fuse holder or a circuit breaker for the main power cable? Well, let's tell them the difference, Brennan. No, oh, let's What's do the it. difference. What is the difference <laughs> the great besides thing. smacking yourself in the face with <laughs> the paper? The great thing about a, a breaker, in my opinion, is you just kill the butt. It's a resettable fuse. Yeah. It's like your uh, fuse panel at your house. You pop a breaker, you switch it back. And then it's good to go. You didn't have to go to Home Depot and buy a new fuse and put it in there and probably kill yourself and get shocked. You just reset it and you're good to go. It's the same thing with a circuit breaker for the car um, as if you do somehow pop the breaker, you can just reset it, which is great, especially on boats. Yeah. Because if you're out on the lake, I don't think you're going to be able to pull over to your local car stereo shop and get a fuse real quick. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Or have to carry extra fuses. And then you do make uh, marine certified breakers and non-marine certified breakers, believe it or not. Just um, get a marine certified because yeah. chances are it's going to be under the hood. Not that you have salt water under the hood, but you know, you may live in a state where it snows and they throw salt on the ground and your car's rusted anyway, but you know. At least you got a good circuit breaker. Yeah. And I also actually, actually prefer circuit breakers because if you do, you know, if you're always upgrading your audio system, you don't have to pull the dang fuse out every single time. Yeah, it's nice. If you just push the button, click. It kills power to kills everything. Kills power, so you don't have to deal with it. Well, but the bigger. downside to a circuit breaker is that if you need to upgrade, you have to buy a whole new breaker. You can't just a replace fuse, a fuse. Just a fuse, you would just replace the actual fuse and go to a different rating. But of course, even within that, uh, if your wire is not sufficient enough, you also need to upgrade the wire. It wouldn't really matter, but it is easier to upgrade from like, let's say 100 to 160 amp fuse just by replacing the fuse versus buying a whole, a whole new, new breaker. circuit breaker. Price wise, between a circuit breaker and a fuse holder, if you're going for a quality fuse holder and a quality circuit breaker, they're probably gonna be within a couple dollars of each other, to be honest with you. Uh, believe it or not, maybe five. I think the circuit breaker is probably going to be a little bit more money, but in the long run, you don't you have, to have to buy, buy a fuse. It. If you're going to actually, if you looked at the cost, where hey, I bought a package of fuses and a fuse holder, and then I bought a circuit breaker, it's probably really not a whole lot different. Well, let's cost. say you're looking at a five pack of uh, mini A and L's, you're looking at ten yeah, bucks. Well, yeah, but you're and a quality fuse holder is twenty bucks, so you're at thirty, so you might as well get the circuit breaker for twenty six ninety nine with free shipping. All right, so I'm gonna leave you with one last thing, and that is that all fuses are not created equal. So make sure you buy a good fuse. So if you look at like a really crappy 100 amp fuse compared to a really good 100 amp fuse, look at the trace. One will look like a hair and one will look really thick. So, <laughs> um, but. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we're gonna post this on the screen for just a few seconds. This will be really helpful Take to you guys. Take a selfie with it. If you look up on your own time, not my time, on your own time, look up Watt's Law and look up Ohm's Law, most of the questions that you have related to electronics can be simply answered using Ohm's and Watt's Law. Really not that difficult. The, the actual cal uh, calculations that you need to use, the math is really simple. Multiplication, division. Multiplication, division. So what's ever on top, right? It's on top, you divide it. Yeah, but they have to know what E and the I and the R mean and the P and that <laughs> So, I mean, that stuff. Uh, <laughs> so just go ahead and look it up. It's gonna really help you guys. We use it every day in our brains. We don't really draw circles all the time. I just drew them for you. But, uh, cause we like you guys. Obviously subscribe for more videos like this. And of course, if you need fuses and you need fuse holders and circuit breakers, uh, visit SonicElectronics.com. Or come to our install bay in Chatsworth, California. Where we have it in stock. But anyway, we'll see you next time. Peace.